Welcome to my channel folks. In today's video, we are going to see how you can use the AWS KMS service for encryption and decryption. Think of a scenario where you have some data, plain text data, and you want to transact it or send it to somebody in an encrypted format. Either it might be a compliance requirement or your security team will say that this password or this API key has to be transmitted at all courses in an encrypted format. So how you can do that? So what we do is we take a plain text data and then we send it to KMS and KMS is going to encrypt the data with the uh, Amazon managed keys or your own managed keys or you can bring in your on-premise keys or some other keys and convert it into encrypted text and gives it back to you. So today in this demo, I'm going to show you how you can do this using the AWS CLI itself. Remember, when you want to do it through the KMS service, the data can be only a small amount that is only about 4 KB of data. If you have to do it with a lot of data, say you have a huge file and you want it encrypted, then there is another way of doing it that we will see in the later demos. In today's video, let us go ahead and see how we can use a CLI to do this. I am in the Amazon dashboard for KMS. This is a new dashboard that they have launched. And you can see here on the left hand side there are three sections one is amazon managed keys these are the keys that are amazon creates it manages it and encrypts your service for example here you can see that i have used three or four services that is elasticsearch s3 and rds so whenever you use any of this service even it could be ebs also and when you use the option of encrypt your ebs volumes then and amazon will automatically create a managed keys here with the prefix aws slash ebs or aws slash s3 so this is completely created managed by amazon the next section is your customer managed keys this is where something that you create and you manage the life cycle of this key when you want to disable them when you want to delete them when you want to use it with other applications or what alias it has to have what name it has to have so all those things here you can see here i already have two keys one of them i have already put it in disabled state as you can see here and another one is in pending deletion state so and uh, before we go ahead and create it through the GUI, I'll just go ahead and show you the customer key stores. Think of it like an hardware that you can have, which creates uh, keys for you and the hardware is dedicated for you. So this is another option where you want to ensure everything is managed and controlled by you. Then you can go ahead and create your own key stores and buy the Amazon hardware that will be dedicated for you and use that hardware to create your keys. So this is a section where we will be creating some keys. Our new key will come in here. I'm just going to add in a filter. So when we come back and see that there will be a new key with an alias or a tag, which has the word uh, string demo. So let us go to our console and start creating the keys. We will be using the AWS CLI. So if you're not familiar with the AWS CLI, go ahead and configure it and come back and watch this video again. So I'll put in the link in the description so it will help you. So the, the easiest way to create a key is all you have to do is AWS, KMS and create key. So it, if you can also specify a key policy, a key policy is nothing but who can access this key and whether they can modify access to this keys or whether they can put it into disabled state or delete state. So if you don't specify all those things, what happens is Amazon applies a default set of policies for this key and goes ahead and create it. So for beginner stage, it's good to go ahead and start it with the default. So press enter. It is going to create a key and gives me all the metadata information. For example, here you find the key ID, which is very, very important. And uh, see the key is being in the state of enable now. So the next thing is usually in your application. So what you do is you would want to use the uh, key quite often, but uh, you don't want to have the entire key ID typed into it it's because people can make mistakes or when you want to rotate the uh, keys, uh, if it is an alias, then you can change the underlying key ID. So what we are going to do now is we are just going to create an alias for this key so that it is very easy for us to remember what key we are referring to and we don't have to remember this long uh, alphanumeric text. So to create an alias, all you have to do is AWS KMS create hyphen alias and then I'm just going to say hyphen hyphen alias name and then I'm going to create a name like this. And remember, it should start with this prefix as alias and then followed by any name you want to give. So I'm going to call this as uh, KMS demo, not key demo. I'm just going to put it in double quotes so that all special characters or anything will be escaped. And what is the target key that I'm going to give? I'm just going to say target hyphen key hyphen ID. 
followed by this text and we should have a successful key created let us go ahead and quickly check it in our console whether the key has been created with this uh, particular string as an alias so i'm just going to refresh my page here and you can see here if i just go ahead and filter it so we have a new key with the key id uh, if i have that in the, in the text in my memory you can see here the same key id is there and all the properties that are necessary this is the key policy that i was talking about amazon says that only the root user can use it and nobody else have permissions to it and there are no tags or anything like that and the key rotation is something we'll look at it later but for now we have created a key and we have attached an alias called as KMS demo and we can start encrypting and decrypting data with this key now so let us go back to our console and see how we can encrypt data with this key so in this folder that I am and I already have a created a sample file I'm just going to get that sample file and it has a very simple text saying welcome to Missy Scammers demo encrypt so this is a simple text file which is less than 4 KB in size so we are going to encrypt this file with the key that we just now created so the syntax for that is AWS KMS encrypt and now we want to output the file once it is converted what we have done is we said this file is going to be read as a binary and we are going to output it as text so just say output as text and then leave it as it is so it is going to send all the data you can see here i made a small typo there so i'm just going to fix that i was wondering whether it is typing properly demo paste followed by plain text and output as text so you can see here it has encrypted the data and given an cryptographic blob for me so you cannot use it properly in other means you cannot send it to other people so what you can do is you can also store it in a file sometimes so that you can send it to other people and this is remember this is base 64 encoded so if you want to store it in a file then you need to decode it so that you can store it in an encrypted file so that's what i'm going to show you now so the syntax follows this format we just say that we will query for the cipher text blob and then we will say base64 decode it and store it into an encrypted file and you can see here there is only text file right now and once we update it we should have one more file there and let us go ahead and refresh the blob and you can see here there's an encrypted file if i add more that file here and we will have that binary blob that we are seeing it even if you open it in the gui or some other editor it is going to show it as a binary blob that is no longer can be read by anybody so now we have got our file which has been encrypted we can also use the same technique to upload some files to s3 for example you can go ahead and say just aws s3 cp and then let us say this is my plain text file that i want to upload and i have a bucket which is called as uh, i just specifically created for this uh, reason it is called as a kms key rotation test bucket and i'm going to say use 01 it should be sse that is i'm saying it should use a server side encryption and it uses the amazon managed keys that is a uh, this cmk is uh, amazon key materials so i'm saying use the context of amazon kms and I'm going to specifically provide my key ID here, SSE hyphen KMS hyphen key hyphen ID. And remember the key ID we spoke about earlier, this is where it is going to be useful now. I'm just going to copy this, put in here. And before I press enter, I just want to go and uh, show in my bucket that this file doesn't exist. You can see here we are in this, uh, in this bucket KMS key rotation bucket and there is no files right now. Let us go ahead and upload it and see uh, what is the upload happened or not and then what is the encryption status. So it is sending the file to KMS now and encrypting the data and uploading it into my S3 bucket. So let us go to our bucket and see it. I'm going to refresh the screen and you see here there is a new file here. Let me click on this file and go to properties and you can see here the encryption has been enabled if i open the encryption you can see here it uses aws KMS, and for the key it use using the alias that uh, key that has been we have created just now so that is how you encrypt the data either in the command line or you use the amazon uh, s3 buckets to store your data and push it here so in the next step i'm going to show you how you can decrypt the data 
using the KMS options. So let us go ahead and see that. So the syntax for decrypting is almost very similar. All you have to do is just mention the decrypt because the key material includes the key ID also. So we don't have to mention the key ID when you are trying to decrypt the data. So I'm just going to say AWS KMS decrypt and then my ciphertext blob is going to be ciphertext iPhone blob is going to be my file and my file is called as uh, encrypted test underscore file and I'm just going to say output the uh, uh, entire decrypted our uh, data into a text format so that we can see it and we want it into a plain text so I'm just going to say plain text here so press enter so again it uploads my file and then gives it into the base64 encoded data here so if we want to uh, put this uh, base64 encoded data into a plain text data so all we are going to do is like we did earlier we are just going to pipe the data into base64 and then say decode okay that's one d and then output decrypted test file dot txt oh, i made an error there instead of a base 64 i just typed base 64 just let me remove that one and we should have got a new file here you can see here there's a new file let me open that file and you can see here the text is the same if we come we can go ahead and do a compare of this file also and we should not have any problems so let's go ahead and do that as well so there are two files are there let us go ahead and do a diff my first file is this one and my decrypted file is this one so if there is any differences the diff will be pointing it out now you can see here there are no differences are there so that is how you decrypt your data that has been already encrypted and store it into a plain text so in case uh, if you are wondering uh, what happens when you don't want to use your key anymore so what typically happens is you need to put your key into a disabled state so that no new applications or no new users will encode uh, your data with a new key so once you identify that x amount of period let us say 15 days you want to put your key in disabled state and after that you are sure that no the old data is being on the disabled state then you can go ahead and delete it because the once the moment you put it in disabled state you will not be able to use the key for decrypting any more data for example we have an s3 bucket now which has a file which is encrypted with this key and uh, if I go ahead and download it now, let us do that as well. So let us go to our browser. Now we have this file and if I go ahead and click on download, it will be downloading this file and I will be able to open this file. But if I, the moment I put uh, the key on disable state, which is what we are going to do next, we will not be able to download it. We'll be getting an error saying the key is in disabled state. So let us go ahead and do that it requires actual key id itself let us go ahead and do that just going to put it into quotes so that we don't have any more errors so now our key has been disabled successfully i'm just going to download it again and you can see here it gives me an exception saying kms key is disabled so this is the reason you should not delete your keys right away you should put it into a disabled state so what you can technically do is you can go ahead and enable your key and then download all the data decrypted and re-encrypt it with another key so that you don't lose out on any data which has been encrypted and suddenly the key disappears because you put it into a deletion state so assuming you have decrypted all your data or moved your data from your old keys how do you delete delete your keys so the command is also very simple for that let us see how to do that so aws kms schedule key deletion and once again i'm going to give the key id and then let us use the numeric key id format and you will get a prompt saying this key id is marked for deletion on this particular date so i hope this was helpful in learning how aws kms encryption and decryption works and how to put your state uh, key in a disabled state or how to delete your keys once it expires or once it passed on a certain period of age so in the next video what i'm going to show you is how you can encrypt more than 4 kb of data let us say you have a big json file or some kind of a data file that you want to give it to your clients but uh, you want to have to transmit it over the internet and you don't want to do it as a plain text so you can use the encryption keys and then send it to them so they can also do a symmetric uh, decryption also 
So in the next video, we'll see that. Until then, I would recommend you to go ahead and try it. Or if you have better suggestions, put them in the comment section. We can all learn from each other. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.